Welcome to the Bledsoe Show. I'm your host, Mike Bledsoe, and today's guest is Christmas Abbott, a professional athlete with her career including CrossFit Games, Olympic weightlifting, and NASCAR pit crew. She's also a transformational coach, creator of Christmas Abbott Nutrition, Badass Body Diet, motivational speaker, and national best-selling author. In this episode, Christmas opens up her, about her pregnancy and her relationship with Ben Bunn. She also shares her experience participating in the TV show Big Brother, why 2017 was a tough year for her, and much more. And so, before we get to Christmas, I want to let you know about a lot of events I have coming up. So go over to thebledsoshow.com, click on the events page. You can see the retreats and seminars that I'm doing. I'll be hitting the East Coast uh, here at the end of the month, hitting uh, Travis Mash's farm on May 26th in North Carolina hitting uh, Richmond, Virginia, June 2nd, and uh, Boston on June 9th. If you go to thebledsoshow.com, click on the events page, you'll, uh, you'll find where we can connect and spend a day together. This is going to be a lot of fun. And uh, today's show is brought to you by one of my favorite companies, Onnit. They make killer supplements, and their certification and training programs are epic. In fact, I'll be in Austin just this weekend to do the foundation certification. So go over to onnit.com slash Bledsoe, and you'll get a free bottle of their, their basically their premier supplement, which is Alpha Brain. It's the thing that people love the most about uh, Onnit. So you can get a free bottle of that. Go over to onnit.com slash Bledsoe. I regularly take that supplement, Alpha Brain, and uh, I think you'll like it. So check it out and enjoy the show. The last time, two times ago I was in Europe, it was with you. And the last time you were in Europe, it was with me. Yes. Yeah, I'm seeing a trend here. I know, I like it. I like it too. <laughs> this is fun. We're having a good time. Um, and uh, when was the last time we did a podcast together? We did a show. It was when you guys just moved to California at Chris's house in the garage. That's right. He just set up the garage. That was years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, He's been on my mind a lot lately. Yeah? Yeah. What, why is that? Or what have you been thinking about? I'm not sure exactly why, um, but he's just come to mind frequently over the last uh, about three or four months. Yeah. And uh, I pulled up an old book that he had sent me, and he had a postcard that he had personalized in it for me. And I started reading the book again, but it w- it was like cracking. So I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't want to – let me put it back. And you can't get the smaller books anymore. You can only get the large collective. Yep. Um, I don't I'm, – I'm not quite sure, but I, I like it. And it's um, I'm aware of it, so when it the reason does surface, I'll I'll be able to know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. He's missed a lot. Um, yeah. So we're we're uh, floating. <coughs> if you're watching this, so if you're if you're listening, well, you'll just have to take our word for it. If you're yeah. watching, this is on YouTube, on the uh, Shrug Collective YouTube channel, and we're floating down the Rhone River in France, and uh, for the purpose of planning a trip for you. So yeah. Christmas has a cruise coming up. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, Christmas has a cruise coming up. So And I do too. <laughs> but hers is a lot sooner. So your cruise is coming up when? Uh, it's November, I think, 5th through the 11th. Yeah. And, uh, 2019. 2019. So this is the furthest. 2019, yeah. I've ever planned anything. I think this is the furthest out you've ever planned anything. Pretty darn close to that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like y- you want to do a trip a year and a half away. And at the time, um, when, you know, uh, Rob and AJ contacted me, it was over two years away. Yeah. Well, you know what? And when this is what I've learned about doing live events is you have to plan them that far in advance. Yeah. That's just how it works. So uh, you're going to have – what, about 150 fans are going to be able to join you on a ship mm-hmm. or on a vessel? A vessel. These are vessels, even though they seem like ships are vessels. Ships are for the sea and ocean. Uh, vessels are for rivers and creeks and other uh. l- lake-style things. I don't know. Vessel. So. Yeah. <laughs> Five-star accommodations on the river, mm-hmm. hitting CrossFit gyms along the way, having good conversations, have fun. Good fun. What are, what are some of the things you want to do on your cruise? Oh, man, we're, you know, this has been awesome because it gives me a real life experience of what I can offer. 
So, I mean, obviously we're going to stop and do CrossFit at different locations. We're going to do either yoga on the vessel, um, mindset seminars and nutrition information. So I'm going to, we're going to go to the market, but I'm also every morning I'm going to give them a different variation of one of my, you know, some of my favorite breakfasts for the badass body diet. Mm. And, you know, just, I'm going to integrate things that I have in my life and except for, I'm just going to expand it on a trip and with 150 fans. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> steal it. Yeah, go for it. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, we're hanging out. It's obvious that we're going to do a show together and, uh, you should definitely check out, uh, the cruise that, that Christmas has going on. Where do they go to check that out? Just so we Badass can Body Cruise. Badassbodycruise.com. Dot com. Yeah. Boom. Do it. I easy actually peasy. I checked it out. I was like, oh man, it looks good. I think I might come. You should what, come. So what's the what are the stops? Uh we're going down uh the Rhone River. So we start in Amsterdam and then we end up in the Germany. Rhine River. The Rhine. Yeah. The we're currently on the Rhone. We're gonna I'm gonna say si- we're gonna sail. Sail. Okay. A sail yeah. on the Rhine. So we're gonna start in Amsterdam. And then hop along and end up in, I think the last one is Frankfurt, Germany. Yeah, I should come to that. We'll eat some spätzle and sausage (laughs) and (laughs) mustard. (laughs) I I love German food. It's so good. Their mustard is so spicy. It burns my nose. And I I love it. You can't get it in the States. Nice. Yeah. And I'm also, you know, my grandmother and my grandmother's German. And my mother uh, was born in Germany. So this is like a really cool, I'll be able to give some of my family heritage. So, you know, the cool thing about what I'm excited about for my cruise is that it's not just about sweating and stretching. It I really get to give some history about my heritage and my life and what I do on a daily basis. Um, you know, and, and that's that's cool because I you get snapshots through social media Mm -hmm. and even though it's going to not be at my home, I want people to understand like this is, this is a pretty average um, series of events that I do throughout my day yeah, um, over the course of a week, except for we're just going to be on a really awesome (laughs) river vessel. Yeah. Um, I'm with you on that. That's, uh, that's one thing I I wish I could do more often, which is, and that's, that's one reason that motivates me to post to Instagram and things like that is, no, this is how you eat like this every day. Uh-huh. Like, this is not special. Mm-mm. And, you know, I move like this. We eat like this. This is a lifestyle that's... Authentic lifestyle. Yeah. And it's sustainable, too. It's not. Like, a lot of a lot of things I think people post are not necessarily sustainable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe some things I used to do aren't I, sustainable. I'm, I'm also guilty, yeah. you know? Um, yeah. But, you know, and I, and I love... I love the fact that people will get to take a peek into like an authentic uh, look into that a yeah. little bit at least. One of my, f- my one of my favorite things about being in Europe as an American is seeing really old shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, it's like they built this in 100 BC. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Can't even comprehend this. This is this was. We don't have anything in America that, that that's no. that old. It's like I find 200 myself, years max. I, I find myself, you know, we're we're gliding down this beautiful river and we're looking at these castles. And I find myself just imagine, like immediately just my imagine ta- imagination takes over. And I like envision all of these things happening. And I, it just, I love history. I'm not very good at it. But I find it fascinating and interesting. And it just to be able to see that and then to hear a little bit of background of what where we are and what happened and it just it like it fires me up it's like this weird like closet passion that i had yeah you know? well i think growing up like you learn history from these books mm-hmm. and it doesn't there's no real contact with it yeah and then coming to europe and actually being able to be in the presence of something that, that's that old and has that much history in these stories i i have an appreciation for it that i could have never had had i not been here in person mm-hmm. that's for sure yeah all right, so what's up? Experience. <laughs> so I'm gonna com- I'm yeah. gonna completely go a different direction now. All right, hard left turn. Hard left turn. <laughs> I want to know uh, what everything that's happened since we last saw each other. Not everything. <laughs> I don't think we have. Enough we don't have time. enough time. I don't know if we have enough time on this cruise day by for day. A week. <laughs> no. Well, you know, we got talking about before this. Uh, I had an interesting 2017. If yeah. people have been following, I think they got a taste of what was going on and 
and we were talking and it sounded like your your 2017 was equally if not more uh jolting for you in, in some ways and just just big in other ways and and uh I want to hear more about that oh man you know and and I've I've been really aware lately of comparison is not where I want to go and do so like I can respect that your 2017 was just awful and <laughs> Then you know, like I said earlier, it was a real rude year. A um, rude year. <laughs> and what? you know, I I, I don't want to compare because that's not what it is. Because I'll your say it wasn't is awful. It was just different. challenging. Challenging. Yeah. Well, mine was awful. <laughs> like I, Perfect. it was challenging, and and I found it awful. But um, so there's a couple things that I've been um recognizing. One 2017 was uh, it, there's a milestone now. It, it it is a milestone in my life. There is. Pre-2017 and Mm -hmm, mm post-2017. And I hadn't had a year like that since I went to Iraq, 2004. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And so for me, like, it was a a collection, the collective year of, started out the year with a devastating heartbreak. Um, Started out the year with, um, I don't even know what to say it, uh, how to say it, like, you know, watching uh, somebody very close to me OD and turn Mm. blue on the floor. Mm. Um, Start, you know, and then, and then, like you, like I didn't leave my house for a month. Oh wow! Um, you know, and I've always kind of, like, when I was a teenager, early teenager, I, I battled depression, and I'm aware of it. You know, like I know how to navigate it. That's why it's important for me to have my fine, you know, my fundamentals on my day to day: gratitude, uh, movement, community, service, and uh, like reflection. Right. So if I'm if I'm implementing those a lot, then I can combat that darker side that, you know, there's, there's no, there's no getting rid of it. It's how, it's how do you navigate it? Mm -hmm. Um, And then, so once I started to kind of, and at the same time, like I'm going through this business, you know, transition of trying to grow and you kind of get your own head up your ass too far. And you have this persona you have to maintain and this perfection that people have put you on and you even though you're like i'm like unapologetically me i'm still starting to conform to what everybody else thinks that i should be you know yeah. this this ruthless badass bitch that like you know does you know it's like that is who i am but at the same time like i wouldn't i wouldn't go on camera without looking a certain way i wouldn't you know it's like i lost that raw edge mm. um and it is because you know you just kind of get into the what I call, you know, like this, you're on the train, you may be having, you know, conducting everything inside the train, but you're still not in control of what's happening. And it's because you're just so disconnected on it from yourself. And so that was the first quarter of the year. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's be fucking real. Right. Um, and the, then I went, uh, I was kind of starting to pull myself out of this hole and not doing a very good job of it either because I wasn't doing the work that I needed to do in order to truly heal. And I didn't know it at the time, right? Because I just went back to what worked before and mm. put on a happy fucking face and keep going. And then I went into Big Brother. I The TV show. The TV show. When I heard that you went on Big Brother, <laughs> I, I thought, but my first thought was, that's still going? Yeah, I was 19 season. 19th season. Yeah, 19th season. And the and the reason I say that is I I haven't had a television since like 2012. So like it's not it's not because I don't care, but it's because I was yeah. just like, wow, yeah. it's still going on. And that was like I think that was the first reality show besides like what the real world. Oh yeah, it, like it happened simultaneously around the same time. Yeah. So yeah. Big Brother, you're in a house with people. Yeah. And you're watch 24/7. You wake up, you put on, before you do anything, you would put on your microphone. Um, you like wake up, put on a microphone. Yeah. All right. So, so you had a rough first quarter. You didn't really. You just kind of. I didn't push heal. it behind you. Oh, I I compartmentalized the shit out of my life. <laughs> oh my god! Like just oh, this is a nice little box. I'm gonna put up there, and I'm gonna lock that up, and I'm gonna shove it into another box, and I'm just gonna be okay. <laughs> that does work <laughs> until it doesn't work. Yeah, we were talking about this. Yeah. It works really well, and then like somebody comes with an atomic bomb, and it just is like, well, here's my life, and I have no idea. It's a jigsaw puzzle on the floor. <laughs> How do you get picked up for the Big Brother, or um, the Big Brother for Big Brother? Big Brother, um, I received a message and I responded. 
And, okay. you know, here's the thing. It's like I went through the series of interviews. I went through, you know, like so I was selected and I had to go through all of the process. Right. So I, I wasn't just like put on there because I was special. Mm -hmm. I'm not special. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, so it, it was for me, it was the challenge. It was a challenge. And I was like, all right, this is what I need in my life. I need a challenge. And actually, I did not need a challenge. <laughs> I needed to sit still. I needed to stop. I needed to have somebody be like, Christmas, you're not okay. And you think you are. Um, and, you know, I don't know if my closest friends and family just had seen me kind of persevere through so much other stuff in my life in the past that they were like, okay, this is what she does. Like, she'll, she'll make it through, you know, she'll find her way. And that's why they didn't really, like, stop and shake me and say, no, you should not. I'm putting a stand to this. Um, I probably wouldn't have listened to them. Right. They may have known that, too. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. They, like, I what mean, would I'm, be the point? I'm not uh, an easy person to confront. Right. <laughs> so. I get that sense. I get the sense of that. Um, that's so beautiful. Um, oh, yeah. We're, we are sailing through a really beautiful landscape right now. Yeah. Um, well, we, we actually will have some videos and stuff from this whole week that we'll be posting that you'll get to see. Yeah, that's beautiful. Oh, my gosh. I want to run up those little things real quick. Actually, not run because my foot's still broken. We haven't even gotten We to haven't gotten yet. to the broken foot yet. So, um, so I yeah, I just I took it and ran with it. And I was like, this is what I need. I need to be able to focus on something other than what's going on in my life and just go and play this weird not reality game because it's not reality when you're out in the house no so i went and you know people don't understand that big brother even though it's a series of competition it's a hot it's 99 percent social game right you have to do a whole bunch of things that uh you, you know you just have to know people read them and and work that angle um and it's also a psychological mind fuck meaning that like we didn't have uh, pen and paper we didn't have any sort of uh, typing we didn't have radio we didn't have tv we didn't have any uh, any sort of communication in the outside world complete solitaire so with 15 strangers that you're conspiring with everybody else to get somebody out every week Talk this would be this would be what i found out you were on big brother when i was trying to call you about something i was like where the hell is christmas <laughs> where oh, yeah, christmas big brother now? i'm like Oh, of course. Okay, makes sense now. Yeah, it's it's a wild. I mean, it's a social experiment. So you are isolated. Completely isolated. So you don't. You have no contact with the outside world, and people don't understand that you you literally can't write. You can't call anybody. You you there's nothing. So you don't know what's happening, and you you lose your freaking mind. So if you think about it, in in our prison systems, um, you know, with these, you know, the worst of the worst, right? We have the murderers, rapists, um, just criminal lifers right the worst thing that you can do to one of these people and put is put them in isolation mm -hmm. and we willingly went into a house that we were going to be put into isolation with a, an environment that feeds on distrust and conspiracy <laughs> and paranoia <laughs> and you're and like here i am like already that broken. sounds kind of fucked up it is real fucked up it is real fucked up it is really really fucked up Wow. And, okay, and you're I like suspected, your, but this is losing like, your freaking mind. Wow, that's that's a that's more of a level than I thought it was. Yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, okay. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you go into Big Brother. Mm. What what what's what's getting in there like like the introduction? Um, I mean, you're you don't get to meet anybody until that night that you go into the house. And they, they're the filming house, all that. Filming. I mean, you're like twenty four seven. You don't see the cameras, but they're there like they have night vision for when you're sleeping they have cameras in the bathroom for safety reasons or for like if people go in the bathroom and conspire right so it's and you have one toilet for 16 people uh you have a bathroom that people hang out with and talk i mean it's it's wild it's wild and and like you you have to immediately start analyzing profiling and manipulating yeah so I mean, it, it, it brings out a different side of people altogether. I mean, you lose your mind no matter what. It's just to what degree and what do you do? Like, how do you lose your mind? Yeah. Well, what did you see? Like, Oh, man, people were breaking examples? down within a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, I mean, night one, Josh, like, my, <laughs> I love him so much. Night one, he's, like, freaking out. And I'm like, dude, you got to pull your shit together. And I, I immediately was like, I can't be around this guy because he's going to, like, he is not stable. Right. He ended up winning. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the guy I coached that one. him through half the thing. And then, like, you know, and then he pulled his shit together and he ended up winning. Uh, maybe, I love him Maybe it was so all much. a ploy. No, he was lo- losing shit. No, he was really shit. losing yeah. shit. Um, and he was like, the, the producer's out to get me. I'm like, the producers are not. They don't care. But you're giving them good content right now, buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. But it was nice because, like, I mean, it took the heat off of a lot of other people. Yeah. Including myself. Yeah. Um, So, I mean, immediately it was just kind of like this weird, weird environment that I had never experienced before. I mean, it, it would be kind of like going overseas the first time, but then you have, like, these other components that make it completely itself, like, unique to its own experience. And if you think about it, like, there's been more people to the moon than that people have been in the Big Brother house. Yeah. Like, okay. And, you know, people get voted off every week, so there's only been a handful of people that have stayed on as long as I have. Yeah. How many How many people start? 16. And it gets down to one. Yeah. Well, the la- until the last day, there's three. Okay. So it gets down to three in the last day. One's voted out. That was me. And then they vote between the two. How long were you there for? Like weeks? 92 days. 92 days. 92 days? 92 days. In and isolation. I was in sequester for five days before, and then I was sequestered for uh, a night afterwards, two nights after. So it's like 97, 98 days? Oh, nine. 99. 99. 99 days. <coughs> 99 days. Okay, so. So yeah. you want to talk about, like, I'm, I'm already emotionally broken in the beginning of the year. And that, like, psychologically breaks me. I break my foot, which is a whole nother compounding uh, series of problems, from challenges for me. Um, How far were you into the program when you broke your foot? Day 13. Day 13. Oh, of course. Yeah. Was it Friday? Uh, it was July 3rd. <laughs> I don't remember if it was a Tuesday or Friday. It was July 3rd. That morning, um, day 13. Day 13. Yeah. Broke your foot. Broke my – broke – I <laughs> – you like crushed your foot. I my foot. You want to see the scar? Yeah, let's do it. Um, Cru- oh my gosh. Excuse my nasty toes right now. I need I'm to gonna get a care. picture of this later. Um, yeah, I'll leave, I'll leave the toes even, out. You can, you know, it's it's swollen. I mean, it, it's every sw- day uh, oh I yeah. wake up and I I limp around until it starts feeling better. So um, we're like nine months in, eight nine months in. Um, something like that. Mm-hmm. So it was July. Was July third, I broke my foot. July. Um, Plus seven. Um, thirteenth, I got, or no, July fifteenth, I believe, I got my um. Uh, surgery. Yeah. So they ended up putting, it was technically two plates, but it was a horseshoe plate and another plate, um, two pens and ten screws, and the screws are like you hang a wall on, like it, they fit in my hand. Wow. So there's video of you breaking your foot. Yeah. I assume. Yeah. yeah. I haven't watched it. Did, did they play it for the whole world to see? Yeah. Okay. I knew, I felt every bone as I broke. Um, and I rolled over and I was like, because I was getting in a piggyback ride. And he slipped because we was were Was this a turf. competition or were you guys just no, messing around? just messing around in the morning. We were, I mean, we don't even have booze there, right? So we were just playing and, um, you know, because you're, you're just, it's like adult camp in isolation. It's very strange. You, you just got to make the most of it, right? Be in the moment. I, I want to, I want to experience this, but I don't want to experience this all at the same time. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, I love the fact that I did it. And I also was like, this was the worst thing I've ever done. You know, so it's like this, it gives you a lot of conflicting feelings about a lot of different things. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you, you break your foot. Yeah. I knew I'd broken it. And, and so I broke 10 bones, not the metatarsals, right? Right. There's meta- toes and the metatarsals, and then there's, the like, the growth plate. I broke 10 inside the growth plate, dislocated four. Um, the only thing that was attached was my toe. The tendon going across to hold it together was severed, and uh, the nerve going across, the main nerve was severed. It's called a less frank fracture, so when I broke it, I went up and back. And so it just, like, went up and then just chopped everything else in half. Oh. Um, and it was it was very very different. Like my doctor, who's one of the best uh, in the nation, like especially L.A., he said you basically took a, a sledgehammer and just smashed it down on the ground. Like because when I broke my when we fell, we fell. My foot went down and it went in half. It folded. And then, like I fell on it and then he fell on it. Yeah. So he said, you know, he's like, it's not going to be the same, and it's not. 
and you know, I'm still within a year of healing. So I'm trying to give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm trying to do all everything that I can to, um, not trying, I am doing everything that I can in my power to, yeah. to heal it, but it's, it takes time. It takes patience. And they actually, ha- when they went in to do surgery, which was four and a half hours, I think, um, they had to use a, a diver bone because they didn't have enough to put it back together. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So, so you have somebody else inside of you forever. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It really is kind of wild. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so you decided Actually to Actually two right now. <laughs> <laughs> We'll get okay. to, we'll get to that. We'll get to the second. Yeah, that's a different that's a different uh situation. A whole different situation. And a procedure. <laughs> How did oh, we get man. there? Okay. No, uh so you so you decided to go you, I I assume you could have left the house but you decided to stay in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so I mean full transparency is like I it was I'm a I'm a tough woman. I have a very high tolerance for pain, and I think that as an athlete, you just do. Like, you know how to endure it. You just know how to cope with it. And uh, what most people find intolerable, we find manageable. And um, it was intolerable for me. The pain was out of this world. I've never had anything so much painful, so painful than this. And even my doctor was like, this is the worst break you can have. Uh, it's the longest healing, mm-hmm. and it's the most painful. I was like, awesome. Way to go, Christmas all the way. You did um, it. I did it. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> Wrong thing. Um, and and um, it, it just, they when I came back and they found out I had to have surgery, which I wasn't allowed to leave the, the house, but when I left the house, like, I was, I had earphones on. I couldn't talk to anybody. Like, it was very, oh, it was like, I had better security than, than Yonce, you know, like, I mean, I was isolated because I wanted to keep the integrity of the game and I can respect that. Yeah. Uh, when I came back, um, they sat me down in a room and said, Hey, you have the choice to stay and use our surgeon or you have the choice to go home and use yours. I'm a competitor. They've done psychological profiles of me cause you, you have to go through this series. I mean, they, I'm sure that they knew what I was going to say, but I also didn't understand the, the realm of the, the capacity of, or the, the the severity of my break mm. other than like what my doctor had said in that in that moment yeah i mean i've um, i've had doctors tell me stuff before i'm like like yeah you you probably think it's bad but i'll be fine well also or, like i just didn't have any i didn't have any resources for information to understand what was actually happening no webmd no webmd no um counsel no no additional pamphlet um any any kind of communication Jeez. For information to understand the severity of the the break and what it was going to mean if I stayed in the house mm-hmm. versus if I went home, so I was sat down and asked if I wanted to stay or go. And of course, I'm going to stay because I'm a competitor and like this is I have to persevere, right? Um, and I believe that I should have been sent home because of uh, you know I'm still dealing with some issues that had I been able to do rehab during uh, part of my when I was in the house, I wouldn't be so set back now. But that's my opinion, my PT's opinion, and another doctor's opinion. Not the overarching fact of it. <laughs> Do you think um, it was unethical for them to try to get you to stay on the show? I might get sued for this, but yes. Gotcha. And I'll tell you, um, we had, for the first time in history, we had a girl self-evict before we had the first uh, eviction. And it, you know, like, I didn't know at the time, you know, like I had been put up for eviction and so they needed me to stay because otherwise they were going to have to nominate somebody else. And it was just like this shit show. Um, and I think that they tried to relinquish their, their own responsibility by asking me, uh, which I think that that was unethical as well. Gotcha. It, I mean, I was, I was heavily medicated. Right. I wasn't given any information. I was sat down by myself in a room of six executives. I think six, I don't even remember. Um, and, and asked if, it was and said it was completely my choice. I don't think that's okay. That's, that's like pressure. saying, it's "Hey, child, do you wanna? Do you wanna?" That's do a lot this of powerful not? people in a room. I mean, I mean, I think we've all experienced that. You sit in a room with one powerful person, two, three, and then you're by yourself and you're medicated. I mean, I can imagine that being like, a, "Oh, well, yeah, I guess." No, it wasn't. I mean, for me, it wasn't an intimidation or uncertainty. I mean, I the only exposure that I had had to any sort of other broken foot was my ex who broke 
two metatarsals. And so I thought it was something similar. Like you're oh. in a cast for a couple of weeks and then you're, you know, you're, you know, within, within a decent amount of time, you're walking around, but no major rehab needed. Um, I was just not informed of the, the way that it was executed was gotcha. questionable. Um, but I mean, you know, it was my choice to stay. Yeah. Um, although I shouldn't have been given that choice. I should have been sent home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, you go back to the house. What was it like getting back in the house? I have to say that I had to pretend like I wasn't in pain. I had to. I mean, because, you know, like I wanted to stay. Like now I'm in the competition. I'm like, well, fuck that. Well, I'm you, going all you, the way. You can't come in and, and be in pain because it was, looked need, like weakness. Well, weakness, but I needed to show people that I deserved to be there. I needed to show people that, like, I wasn't a burden, that, um, you know, I could do everything that they did and that, you know, they weren't just like, oh, just get rid of her, you know, because cause it's problematic. And, I mean, I was, I also had to, like, I didn't have any timers for my medicine, so I had to watch the own clock. I'd wake up, had missed my medicine window, it'd be in extreme pain. Um, getting up was dangerous. Um, you know, having to go to the bathroom uh, by myself, like, I had crutches for a little while. That was, it, it was just very, very dangerous. And I know, like, being in a home environment by yourself is dangerous, you know? Right. But I, I couldn't lean on anybody for help. And Josh, um, he didn't ask me. He would just do things for me. Gotcha. And um, you know, he saw he saw me struggle. Yeah. But I I tried hard not to show that. Yeah. And it was tough because like I couldn't talk about how hard it was, and it was really really hard. Yeah. What was um. What what got you through that? What got what made you stick it out beyond that? Um, just, <laughs> I mean, I, I lock in, you know, I think that I have a unique ability just to persevere no matter what. And I didn't know, like, not that I didn't know any difference. It's just, there was no other choice. Yeah. Um, I don't quit. Um, and I didn't learn the difference between quitting and doing what was best for me at that time mm. and what else did I have to go home to I didn't you know um, have a relationship anymore I you know I just had watched a dear friend die in front of me and get revived um, I didn't have passion for my work because of the the series of unfortunate events of that year you, like, you hadn't dealt with things, and so it just no. the passion got sucked out. Yeah, so it's like, this is the only thing that I have to hold on to. Mm. This is the only thing that I have some sort of power or authority on. What did you, f did you feel like you sacrificed something? <laughs> no. By um, staying? I mean, other than the health of my foot. <laughs> yeah. Um, And, you know, like I lost my mind during the process, but here's the thing is that Fast forward, and I mean, like, coming out of the house was a whole other story. Um, I was in shell shock. I mean, I don't think that I lost anything or sacrificed anything. I think that it, I, had to, I had to break on multiple levels in multiple ways to be able to learn the lesson and be able to prepare for this year. Because this year is um, also a before and after, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm... I'm finding gratitude in the struggle and I, I wouldn't change it uh, because I love the lessons that I've learned and it's, it's changed me fundamentally. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I love the movie collateral beauty and I, I talk about, I've been talking about this so much. Um, I want to go watch that now. You mentioned man, it the other night. It, it will fuck you up. Um, it's so beautiful in the sense that, like, through every tragedy, if you're patient, if you're aware and willing that on a long enough timeline, you're going to see the collateral beauty of it. And, I mean, that comes with death. That comes with um, loss of of anything and everything. You know, we, we kind of tie ourselves to these tangibles. But ultimately, like, we need to be tying ourselves to ourselves mm -hmm. and finding our own inner happiness and connecting to people on a, on a level that, I mean, that, that you just, you, you can't explain, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, and, 
and it took a while, but I, I'm, and I'm still learning. I'm still struggling. Um, but I'm in a much better place and I wouldn't be here. Like I'm in one of the best places in my life, even with the dark struggle. Um, and I wouldn't be here without that series of unfortunate events that, I mean, broke me mentally, spiritually, emotionally, uh, physically. What, was there anything after the broken foot coming in? What was, what was, was there anything that was more difficult than that, that at the big brother house? Well, you know, you think about breaking your foot and with somebody that I've always, you know, I started to lean on my therapy to try and get through the earlier part of the year because like I, my therapy is CrossFit. My therapy is movement. My therapy is sweat. Um, now suddenly the only form of therapy that I have in this house mm. is gone. Yeah. And I wasn't uh, okay with myself enough to sit still and meditate. <coughs> so I had no therapy and or form of therapy. And so when I got out of the house, like I was shell shocked. I was, um, I was not okay. I was very strange. I was, um, traumatized. This is September. This is September, late September. I was very traumatized and I couldn't, I couldn't talk to somebody on the phone cause I couldn't see them face to face. So if you wanted to talk to me, you either had to come to my house cause I would, I, sat on the back porch of my house. I listened to music. I wrote, I read, I meditated and I smoked pot because I refused to take drugs, uh, Xanax or anything of the like, um, in order to be able to, you know, I used it as a, as a, as a bridge, the gap, you know, to yeah. just, cause I was having, I was on the verge of a panic attack 24 seven. And it was because I just didn't know how to cope. And I had this compounding series of events that, just, just, um, I, I, I mean, I, I was broken and there were some days that I was just like, what's the fucking point? And, I, and it was everything that I could do to hold on for one more day. Wilson Phillips just pops in my head. Wilson oh, Phillips. One more day. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Oh my God. I'm going to play this song for you. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, okay, cool. <laughs> A little comic relief there for you. Okay. Um, and it just like, eventually it would be like I had a moment of not relief, but lightened. Um, you know, it was just me and my dog on the back porch, um, hobbling around. And that's when the reality of my foot step, you know, like really kind of hit me. It's like, oh my God, I've really messed myself up because I was still on a cast. Well, a, sh a boot. Yeah. And, um, and I couldn't work out. Like I'm, I'm going through this downward spiral, kind of, you know, I, I was in, a, I was depressed. Yeah. Um, and, and not knowing how to figure that out. So I just started doing anything and everything that I could get my hands on yoga. I would sob in the, like through the entire yoga class. Um, but it was only, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to go pop the emotional pimple today. <laughs> um, that's, that's good though. I mean, like, Oh, it was going, great. I loved I mean, it. I, no shame. It can, yeah. Yoga can be very healing mm -hmm. if you let it. If yeah. You really get into it. That's amazing. Um, you know, and, and I just leaned on my friends, and they were like, how are you today? I'm like, I'm not okay. And, you know, I cried more than I ever did because I, before that, I was, like, so just stellar and regal and, like, you know, like, I have this, I have this, I have this compartmentalized. It's very nice and organized. Mm -hmm. um, and I just stopped caring about, like, what people thought about me, and I started caring about what I thought of myself and how to make that better. Um, and it wasn't like I had low self-esteem. I just was broken. Yeah. Like completely broken, shattered. And um it took a long time, you know, and there was the, you know, there was I had happy moments, right? There were there were some good times in that last quarter of the year. But the the last time, the first time that I actually felt joy in 2017 for the entire freaking year was um I was flying down to Florida to go see my best girlfriend and her girlfriend. Beth and JB, <laughs> <laughs> my little crazy ones, but they're they're so amazing. They're fun. Um, they're, but yeah. In like a couple of days, we're leading up to New Year's, and I was like kind of having a panic attack. I was like, this, like I'm not okay with my life right now. Like so there, something has to change. And I just impromptu bought a ticket to go to Florida. I said, this is what I want to do. I said, on the day New Year's Eve, I want to um, kayak out to an island. I want to write the list of bullshit of 2017. I want to write what I want from 2018. I want to write what I ex want from my partner. Um, and, and 
I'm going to burn the list of 2017. I'm going to do a flow on the beach. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to have it my day. Like, I'm going to own this day. And I wanted to camp on the beach, but incremental weather. You know, we had a thunderstorm that night. So that's exactly what I did. And I was taking off, and I had bought my ticket like two days before. But I was taking off from Raleigh, and I just had like this relief. And I started laughing out loud by myself on the plane. Um, And like there was a moment of joy, like pure joy. And I hadn't felt that all year long. And I was like, oh, my God, this is this is real. Like, this is a feeling that I just didn't recognize anymore. Nice. Wow. And so, like, that was the start. <coughs> I won't say that was the start of, you know, like, I had been doing the work to get to that point. Right. But, man, that was the that was a big turning point for me because all I wanted to do was get to the end of the year. I needed to get out of 2017, and it couldn't come fast enough from the beginning. It could not come fast enough. So, like, when it – I cried. uh when it stuck, struck midnight, like, I, I mean, it was just like, okay, this is, this is it. And then I went into one of the best months of my life, January, 2018. This is why rituals can be so important. I, I remember growing up and thinking of rituals as being pointless and dumb and all this kind of stuff, but it gives us a point to, to say it's now going to be different. It's a, it, yeah, it's a psychological time marker, Yeah, you know, something and you know, People could have said, like, Christmas, you could have restarted this or that or anything. I was like, no. I knew. And what was it? Our our concept of time, it didn't make any difference in my life other than what I thought it did. Right. And I needed that. Yeah. 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 That's cool. So January. Tw- so so <laughs> this is awesome. Like, sounds like the entire 2017 was just a kick in the I mean, It was whatever. a real motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like, jeez. Um, and, and you. It sounds like you really you said, hey, look, this is going to be different now. I'm going to make this change. You have power. Yeah. Um, man, and I, and I was still journaling. I'm still doing all of that. I'm still doing all the practices that allowed me to have that understanding mm-hmm. and um, regain my power for myself and pull myself out of that, that hole. And like I said, I still struggle. I'm, I'm going to be a constant work and prog- or, you know, workflow um, but I, I recognize now when I'm not doing my practices consistently. And um, it, it just, I don't know if it, I regained my power or I just, I feel like I just grew, I, I emerged into a, a new self. And like, it was like all the core Christmas. Like I'm still like real rough around the edges, but I'm still like kind of prissy. And yeah. like, you know. Oh, you're still Christmas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and that's awesome, you know, but I feel like I've just shed all of this bullshit of what people's expectations and like what I, what society thinks I should do. And like, uh, just so much. I just like, was like, what? There's some baggage. I don't need it anymore. And that's what I even did physically. Th- I went through my house and I got rid of like almost all of my clothes. I sold my house. Um, you know, I was just like, I'm downsizing, I'm simplifying, and I'm going back to my fundamentals. I'm going to, you know, well, I didn't know it at the time, but, you know, like now it's just, I wake up, I want to have breakfast, I want to go teach class, I want to work out, I want to go to the farmer's market, I want to make some recipes, I want to meditate, I want to, you know, journal, and like have this, you know, I want to live my perfect life. Yeah. And I can do that now. Yeah. Because it's, because it was my decision, and that's it. Why weren't you doing that before? I was conforming to what, you know, like I was like, oh, I got to do this work and I got to do that work. And I was so consumed with my career, which isn't, you know, it worked for me. But to talk about that is that I had such like I'm a very masculine personality. Mm -hmm. Um, It's worked for me really well for a long time. And I know that I can look at the sequence of the last few years and life has been trying to get me to tap into my more feminine side. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I broke my left foot in like in half and wow. that's your feminine side you mm-hmm. know left is uh, controlled by feminine right is masculine and for me once i started to kind of reflect on this and look into it um my foot my travel like how i go forward it was like you cannot go forward in life because we have so you know like something in life has something beautiful prepared for you but you cannot go forward until you tap into your feminine power yeah um and so for me it was like okay uh, and it it, it I don't know if it's just like a coping mechanism, whatever you want to call it, but I believe it. I feel it, right? Yeah. Um, and it's there's a lot of emotion tied to that. And so, like, when that broke, all of my feminine power kind of was just, like, flooding into me. And I was like, whoa, oh, wow. whoa. 
and um it's it's nice because i can i can be more vulnerable and not feel like i'm giving up something or exposing myself it's powerful and i can be more patient and kind and understanding and still get what i want right um and it's funny because you know going into january 2018 i have a different mindset started off the year beautifully and uh like i said one of the best years of my life and it wasn't any one well there was one thing that's pretty rad (laughs) um but the series of events was really just good conversation, connecting uh, with people in their soul, um, bigger purpose other than like bigger than me, bigger than the world, like mm-hmm. real, real positive social impact that doesn't matter um, who's leading the way, you know? Yeah. And it's, it's, it's magical. Like I had a series of beautiful, magical experiences and it wasn't, it wasn't drug induced. It wasn't, um, uh, like, uh, what intention induced, like, like, what can you give me if I give you this? Right. Um, it was just it just as it was, um, it does really sound like you, you did tap into the feminine essence of being in that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I mean, you know, I can go through the, the series, but it it's really, it was just really like the feeling that I felt I connected to the people that I was with. I was in the moment. It wasn't, um, there was no sort of, uh, um, what's the word that I'm looking for when you do something with an intention of eliciting a certain response? Um, I don't know. There was no sort of alternative motive. That's what it was. Yeah, or manipulation, maybe. Yeah, nothing. And it was just yeah. like, I just enjoy your company, so I'm going to sit here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was calm. I was journaling. And then... Um, I, I would say I've wiped away a lot of that in the past. I, I remember if you would ask me, you know, are you... Do you have any motives here? I'd have been like, no, no, no. But in the background, there always was or mm-hmm. has been. And over time, I've improved in that department where it's like, like let's just... Let's just hang out or Chill. get stuff or get something done. And I don't have to be the one at the front or whatever, but let's just be and let let just things shake out the way they are instead of trying to scramble for the top. Yeah. yeah. Or fight for a certain um, product, or, you know, like a result. Yeah. Uh, just let it be. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, um, a little backstory before I get to the really cool news is that, you know, um, so I had been kind of talking to this guy, not really talking, but like communicating with this guy. We talked, we worked for the same charity, um, Ben, Mm -hmm. and he kept kind of asking me for, you know, to hang out here, hang out there. And I was like, no works on the way, works on the way. But I mean, I found him quite interesting from the first day I met him and there's not that many people that catch my attention. Yeah. So, it's hard to intrigue me. <laughs> um, but if you're intrigued, you're like, oh, I was overwhelmingly intrigued when I first it's met like, him. It's like, this like, guy has got my attention, huh? I mean, yeah. he, he had a lot of, like, I was like, I had never been shut up. And, and HJ really? saw me, like, I lost my cool. Really? On stage, in front of everybody. I couldn't say a word. I was like, really? And I turned red, and I just laughed and giggled. I was like, I was a little schoolgirl. <laughs> I that's mean, awesome so funny and it, we had met before and we were both with other people and then um we were no longer so we were just kind of like communicating a little bit here and there and uh he kept trying to coordinate a meet up and i was like hmm. and then i went into big brother and then i came out and we we ended up meeting up early october and i mean it's just like we we just hit it off i was still like in this very weird scramble place yeah. um and also trying to put my my business back together um, being absent for three months and then also coming home and just being Well, that's like, got to be wild. I mean, going in isolation while having a business running. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've taken breaks before, but not complete isolation for months on end. Ooh, I know. You know what? Jenny, Jenny ran the show and she was amazing. But luckily, we were pretty much, f- we were pretty far ahead in schedule because um, I'm a little neurotic and uh, I was. And, um, you know, she, she was great. She ran the show. She knew my plan. She knew what I wanted and she executed it. Nice. So that was awesome. And, 
Um, but she had been kind of running a little solo before then because I was like in this bad place before. Right. So, uh, came back, <laughs> wasn't able to jump in right away. And, you know, Ben was such a breath of fresh air. I didn't have to talk. I didn't have to entertain. He led the way. Um, you know, we had some really amazing intimate conversations that allowed me to feel comfortable and put my guard down and also acknowledge kind of what was going on with me in the in the current moment. So he helped me a lot with um, coping with coming out of the house and the previous in that that year. And um, so we, we started dating. Well, I, I've met Ben. Yeah. And I've. I've talked to he him says a, hi, by a the few way. times. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Ben. And um, I actually met him, man, it must have been 2009, 2010. Wow. Maybe 2008. I don't know. But he stuck out to me at a, I was doing a seminar because he was in an overhead position and there was a Chuck Norris tattoo <laughs> yeah. on his yeah. on the inside it's of his arm. And I go, you have Chuck Norris tattooed on your arm? He goes, yep. I'm like, I like you. <laughs> but He's very likable. He's fascinating. Very, he is very likable. Yeah. Um, talked to him quite a bit. One of my business partners uh, has spent a lot more time with him. And uh, one of the things that, uh, that, I, that I recognize in him now, like thinking about it, is he's a really strong masculine guy. Mm -hmm. So I think that, um, and I know quite a few strong women, and you're a very strong woman, <laughs> and the... Uh, a, a woman like you needs somebody. If you want to really be in your feminine essence, mm -hmm. you need someone who's going to be a really strong masculine 100%. guy to have that. Because if a guy's not showing up good, in, you know, in, in that strong masculine way, it's not going to give you the permission to go there. So it sounds like to me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that he was able to create a space for you to, to blossom in a way. Yeah, uh, that's, I think that's very accurate. And you know, you know, for his, for his, I mean, he, he is a very masculine man. And I don't mean like he's macho. I mean, like he just has a very masculine yeah. personality. He takes care of things. Masculine doesn't mean macho. Macho, right. macho definitely doesn't mean masculine. No. It usually means insecurity. Right. Um, and he's, he's secure. He's brilliant. Uh, and his empathy for people and understanding where they are and what they mm. need is beyond anybody that I've ever seen. Like his capacity for that is an understanding is out of this world. Uh, which I admire greatly. And, um, you know, he he just was a, a really great uh, source of support for me. Now, we started dating, and, and uh, this is real transparent. Like, the, I don't think the world really knows much of this, but um, there were some, some factors that just didn't allow us to continue the relationship after a series of time, a, a period of time. And, you know, a lot of it's like work, distance, um, you know, his – his past for his history and relationships and, you know, I, you know, I don't have any uh, residuals from my ex from the breakup earlier, but, you know, I, it's still, you don't want to go from one to the other, right? Definitely. Um, yeah. And also coming out from that trauma of the house, it just, it was best that it w we were just like, cool. Chill out. You are amazing. I'm amazing. This worked really well. We have a lot of great chemistry. And we don't like I didn't want to ruin it because it could become toxic very quickly. And we both kind of saw the writing on the wall. And uh, so we decided like right around Christmas time, we were like, this this isn't going to work. Right. Um, and it wasn't even like a not now thing. It was just like we're just let's just like nip at this in the bud. Well, you know, we have chemistry. <laughs> uh, so we weren't together and, um, I was in St. Pete looking around cause I, I was like, I have to get out of Raleigh. This is, this is what my new year is going to produce. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love the area. And, you know, we had a couple, um, we met up for a couple drinks and had a, had a great time, <laughs> you know, <laughs> chemistry is there. Um, and that was in January and that was, uh, I think like mid January. Um, and then end of January, like I, my body is clockwork and I also was doing a shoot for second skin. And I know, like I always kind of plan ahead where like, like, okay, if I'm going to be on a shoot and I'm going to be on my period, then I know that like, I have to prepare. And that neurotic didn't quite leave me. Um, <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, I have to shoot tomorrow morning. I haven't started my period. 
maybe it's just stress from travel because that happens occasionally. Oh, yeah. So really, like, I was like, okay, I've been traveling. I was home four days out of January. So I was like, okay, my body is just exhausted. Let me just go get a test just to make sure. And um, I peed on it, and I put it, and I was like, okay, one stick. Cool. Put it down. I went and worked. Like an hour later, I came back in to pick it up to throw it away, and another line appeared. And I was like, what the f- I mean, I, I, like, my mouth dropped open, my eyes popped out of my mind, I, um, my, I looked in the mirror, and I just was, <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, you asked that question really dumb, you're like, how did this happen? <laughs> you know? I'm so confused. Like, <laughs> and I mean, I, I'm not a promiscuous woman, there was no question about whose it was, or right. when it happened, I can tell you exactly what night, and <laughs> I mean, like, there was no question, and I was like, what? Well, well, okay. Um called my parents called him. I, the delivery to him was bad it was very bad like i actually i've, I've been thinking I'm, about I'm, ex- I'm excited that it was bad <laughs> it this, was this makes so, good podcast material so <laughs> bad i mean and i and i was like i was over the moon i was over the moon and there was another time that i was pregnant in my life and it was devastating mm. so the, the 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 visceral initial reaction was was like i was just overjoyed i was like oh my god this is amazing this is incredible mm. um not ideal situation, you know, like here's this guy that we tried to work. It didn't work. He, you know, like we have good chemistry, but like, oh my God, we live in different places. You know, there's a, there's a suddenly after the initial shock, you're just like, ah, ah, uh, freak out mode a little. Yeah. Um, but it didn't really sink in for a couple of days because I had to work and I can still turn on my blinders, but it was very, very difficult. And I I'm bet. telling you, so we don't, we never really talked on the phone. We always FaceTime. And so we're FaceTiming. And I'm like, oh, hey, yeah, uh, I'm pregnant. <laughs> that is such a bad delivery. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God. And he, like, stopped. I mean, st- did the same thing I did. Eyes popped out of his head, mouth open, stopped. And I actually thought the screen froze. And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for, like, 30 seconds, he was just, like, frozen. And then he was like, oh, my gosh, like. How am I going to uh, – his first concern was, how am I going to be a good father if you live in North Carolina and I live in Florida? Mm. First first thought. And I didn't know what I expected by calling him and telling him. Um, there, there, I mean, like, I just didn't think about it. There was no connection to, in my mind of what's going to happen. And I was like well, – there was no forethought. I was like, I just have to tell him. Mm-hmm. Like, I just have to tell him because, like, this is, this is what's happening right now. And, uh, you know, and <laughs> – after that, we, we we talked a little bit, and I was like, "Okay, we'll, we'll just we'll just talk talk tomorrow." Bye. Uh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's like no planning, it's just like no. Uh, it no. was still just like processing. Oh, for there him. Were, it was not. It wasn't even processing yet. Like we were both in shock for days, and then I'm like, you know, I do the sh- second skin shoot. I'm freaking out, and then I'm on the plane, and that's when I finally have a moment of silence. I'm like, "Holy God, I'm pregnant." And what does this mean? Like, we're not together. Like, we do live in separate places. Um, you know, all the questions that everybody started asking was flooding into my mind. And, um, and you know, it just took a little time. It took time. So I, I scheduled a trip to go see him. Um, my first OB trip, I think. I can't remember. Um, and, I mean, he's just been exceptionally supportive and a lot of guys don't get on board until much later in the pregnancy or even till the birth and immediately i mean like i said his first concern and his foremost concern has been still you know how am i going to be a good dad Mm. and that that just swells my heart and you know we're we're still again this is true true, nobody knows this yet we haven't i haven't really put this out into the world um you know we're working on our relationship we we had a candid conversation in the very beginning of like look this is unplanned but it's not unwelcomed and like the the biggest thing missing you know like i came out of big brother and i was like i want to have babies i was like i don't know where that came from and funny thing is is that when we were when we were first starting dating he's like wouldn't it be funny if like i got you knocked up and then we could say there's a christmas bun in the oven because his last name is bun (laughs) and so like i not immediately but later on i reminded him like you manifested this (laughs) i was like i don't know if you remember that day but like you totally called this and you know honestly there's nobody else that i would rather share a child with because he is 
honestly one of the most incredible men, not one of the most incredible man that I've ever met in my life. That's amazing. And we're working on establishing a strong friendship and foundation for companionship and um, what it looks like to co-parent. And I know that some of this stuff may blow up in our face. Fine. But we're working on it. We're trying. And before we throw the dynamic of romantic relationship into the mix, we're working on our fundamentals. And a lot of people don't understand that because we're like, well, why aren't you guys together? We're like, well, we are. We're life partners. Um, We just don't know how um, it's going to play out yet. It's going to go one of two ways. And that's okay. And that's that's a lot for me to handle too because, like, I do care deeply about him. But I, we both... I especially and like I don't want to fast forward things because there's a lot of there's a lot in the granule granule things that you can miss by just jumping to totally the bed. I think I mean I think that's a very mature way of approaching the whole situation. I think that people are so focused on what things look like yeah. to the rest of the world. What did my friend asked me if I got married? I was getting married to him the other day. I was like. <laughs> that, that's not the reason to get married. No. And I mean, and I even watch this with people who, you know, it's not working out with and they're worried about their kids and this and that. I'm like, it's better for the kids to see healthy adults as their role models and the people that are raising them than for people to, to have their parents be miserable because they're trying to stay together or right. whatever. You know, I, th- I think that, and I'm not a parent, so, but... <laughs> I think it's really important to show your kids that you're that you're happy, yeah. and that you're doing because they're gonna do what you do. Uh, yes, one hundred percent. And then if you're forcing yourself in situations to look good to the public and to people and friends and so on and so forth, then they're gonna end up doing the same thing, and you don't want that for them. Yeah, and I mean we we both um, we both talked about like what kind of parents we want to be, how do we want to raise our child, and. You know, that that's kind of a thing. He's like, I don't want to do what my parents did. I'm like, I don't want to do what my parents did either. Yeah. But we also aren't our parents. And we get to choose how we interact with each other. And he is just, you know, like, we have really great communication, even when we don't agree. And that's what I want to hold on to. That's what I want to nurture and enhance is our communication. Because that is, mm. going, that is fun. Like, that is it. Um, and, you know, along with that comes everything else, I believe. And... You know, I have such, I mean, such a desire to, to be involved with my child's life at the fullest capacity and he too, that for whatever reason, if we aren't together as a family unit, because I said, it's going to go one of two ways, either one, we're going to be able to create a really great foundation and understanding of what we want to raise the child together and be co-parents, um, and be involved in each other's life and confuse the hell out of everybody because they're like, but you're not together. Um, and you're having a positive working relationship for your child. Or we're going to uh, end up merging and being a true, strong family unit. Like, mm-hmm. really unbreakable. And that's worth the wait. Mm-hmm. And I'm willing to, to do what it takes to to make sure that the, the structure of that is as strong as possible and sound instead of just being a little selfish right now or um, not patient and short-tempered and say, let me jump and fast forward to here because that's what everybody else has said or everybody else has done. <coughs> um, we're not everybody else. He's never done anything traditional. I've never done anything traditional. So why the hell would we start here? Yeah. Keep doing you. Yeah. Love it. So we, we have a, you know, and we're getting closer, and it's just like this nice emotional intimacy that we're developing. And it's, it's I mean, like, literally, we have this beautiful being created, and I think that individually we're really cool humans. Together, we're kind of a, a scary duo. I would agree. <laughs> you know? I like it. I, I like the two of you. <laughs> like, even if, even if, like, you know, you're not going to be romantic, couples in the future just the fact that you're doing stuff together is actually really really cool and his success is my success and vice versa and i just want to see him succeed um because i know that that's gonna that's gonna feed into um you know our child and our child's future and 
we're gonna have a real rad kid. Yeah. Yeah. I look I'm proud of him. him. He's done a lot. He's worked really hard to to make some things right in his life to accommodate this um, change. And I, I see a tremendous change in him already. And it's awesome. You know, love is patient. And it's nice because I do, like, I, I really do feel um, protected and appreciated. And, um, you know, there was, there. it's just different. It's different. Life is very different now. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. And I just think about this little kid, man, and like I keep having visions, and I, I think it's a girl we find out when I get back from the trip from Europe. Um, but man, well, karma for us both is definitely probably going to give us a girl. <laughs> <laughs> like that's just the way that it is. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just it's a pregnancy itself is a whole nother conversation. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never yeah. seen you like this, and I I don't know if it was. I mean, it, it's got to be. The combination of events from 2017 plus the pregnancy, but I don't know what's is having, which is having like the strongest impact. But normally you're just like, just make it work, aggressive and like hitting it hard all the time. And this is the first time I've seen you tired, and <laughs> and say, you know what, I'm tired. I'm gonna go take a break. I'm like, well, usually if she was tired, she'd just plow right through it. Yeah. Wow, she's actually taking time for herself and yeah. the child. And I'm not. I don't feel guilty about it. Yeah. Because this is the most important thing that I'll ever do. Nothing can compare to this. Yeah. And, you know, pushing through it is selfish. And it, it's, it is no longer forever more about me whatsoever. Yeah. And, you know, and people are like, oh, don't you miss drinking? Oh, you don't, you don't miss this. And I'm like, that is, that is not even drops in the ocean compared to, to what I'm doing with my body right now, preparing for this child and making sure that this child has the, the best opportunity to be the healthiest, happiest, most well-rounded kid in the world. And that means that, you know, like, I need to go rest and miss out on some of the most craziest experiences of, of your life, then cool. No remorse. I'm happy to do it. Yeah. I'm feeling very adult right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just the fact that I'm having this conversation, I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like cheering you on. I'm like, fuck Yeah. A while back, I, I I wouldn't even been able to have this conversation. Yeah. I'm feeling like an adult. You you're seeming a lot like an adult. This is crazy. Which this is funny because I feel more childlike than ever before. Like I oh yeah. I want to be held. Um, you know, I just want to take my time. I, you know, I'm curious about things. Um, like all of that, like childhood kind of feelings are coming back to me, and so I feel much more childlike than I have ever been before. I think I think that's part of getting it's like getting past this point where you actually start becoming more like i guess responsible would be the word mm -hmm. there's a there's a sense of freedom for yourself that you get to have like that childlike view of the world i guess so i mean it's just wild to think that i get to watch somebody see the world for the first time and i get to live vicariously through them yeah um yeah i mean it's i don't know i mean i, I mean people are always like oh it changes you and i'm like it's real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, we were talking at lunch about selecting uh, doctors and yeah. and things like that. And also, there's so much bad information out there. Real bad information. And the way that our medical system works with pregnancy is it's very sanitized and it's not very personal. And uh, this became aware. Th this came to my awareness a few years ago, like many years ago. I don't even know why I watched this documentary um, all so long ago, but we watched a documentary called "The Business of Being Born." All right. It was created by Ricky Lake. <laughs> really? Why am I watching this documentary? I love Ricky I don't Lake. Know. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I think. I think Ricky and I. I love your curiosity out. on children, and like I had no idea that you had researched so much about it. We were I know lunch, a ton. And I, was like, and I was like looking at Ashley. I was like, "There's something we need to know." I don't even. <laughs> I don't even. I've been. I've been researching uh, like child development and stuff for. I don't know, was it oh, about ten years? Oh, well, I think when that I when I started, I, I think if you go far enough into like trying to figure out the human body and health, you have to go to the to where it starts well it makes sense with you know if if child development is the beginning it's human development I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm really a fan of human development yeah. and 
And that's really just the most formative years as back at the beginning. That's before you have all the baggage. Yeah. Yeah, that's where all the, that's and your broken. clean slate. And yeah. yeah. And you're like, yeah. okay, where did where did we start going so all the uh, bullshit astray? Guy, yeah. Um, yeah, but it, you've done a, it sounds like you've done a really good job of being uh, taking responsibility for your own pregnancy and, and for the child and asking good questions of the doctor. Is there anything you're doing that, I mean, you have a, a, a doula. Yeah. And these are, this is something that's becoming more common. Uh, uh, any advice you would give women who are approaching pregnancy? Oh, man. You know, every, every body is different. Um, but I will tell you that, like, the timelines are kind of impressive because it, it really does affect you. Like, you're like, oh, it eight weeks, you're going to feel this. And you're like, yeah, right. Oh, I feel that. Um, but you know, in, in women, every party is different. Like I had, I had very little morning sickness. And when I did feel ill, it was because of a combination of either exhaustion or stress or the two. And my body was just like, slow down, yep. shut it down, or I'm yep. going to shut you down. Yep. So, um, you know, but the, you know, everybody's different. So those symptoms can be managed, uh, differently. What I, what I, have been advocating to anybody that has sent me questions about whether or not to work out or how much should they lift. I'm like, ask your doctor more. Um, with, with my, my initial intake, there was a lady that was like telling us all the do's and don'ts and like the process and everything. And, and Ben has come to every appointment and has, I mean, you think I'm in the know? I am, I pale in comparison to this guy. Like he is like, he is in it. <laughs> I'm like, when do you have time? Um, and so we're asking, and the lady tells me, she's like, you can't lift more than 20 pounds. I laughed in her face. And I was like, I have lifted more than 20 pounds today, lady. And, you know, and I asked her why, and she didn't have a very good answer. So right after that, we were going to see the doctor, like, it was in, in the same appointment. And I was like, hey, so um, the, you know, coordinator said that I can't lift more than 20 pounds and my question of asking him that was to see what his response was because was like depending on his it. response yeah it's yeah. a litmus test um is 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 he gonna be like well it's true um and have this very old-fashioned perspective uh, you know approach to pregnancy and, and pregnant women that we need to be just lying around on our backs um <laughs> or is he going to listen to me and have an a, a sophisticated uh, educated answer and he was like, you are an athlete. You obviously know what your limits are. Don't go to the limit. Stop before the limit. You can lift as much as you want. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I was like, you might want to tell your girl over there to not tell people to lift 20 pounds. Right. So I had this woman, um, you know, email me. And she's like, hey, my doctor said not to lift more than 25 or 65 pounds. And I said, did you ask him why? And she was like, no. I said, so you're just taking what he says or she says for face value and not pushing that that inquiry. And she's like, yeah. I said, did you tell him what your lifestyle is and what you've been accustomed to and the level of, of activity that you're, you're expected to, like your body has become accustomed to every day? And she said, well, a little bit. I said, I would push that because what's happening is that we have this blanket cookie cutter approach to pregnancy. And then there's, you know, we're, we're in a society that's evolving physically with our activity and we're not adjusting um, the medical aspect of it. Devolving. Yeah. <laughs> and, and. They're standards. These yeah. are medical standards. Standards. And like you were saying before, every body is different. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and it's such an you're easy not standard. Thing. I am I'm not standard. I'm not standard at all. One thing I want to bring up, I was just thinking about this. Uh, we have a friend back in uh, San Diego. Her name is uh, Colleen. Hey, uh, Colleen. Flaherty. Flaherty. I never say her last name. Mm. I never say it. What's up, Colleen? I know she's watching this. Hey, Colleen. She has uh, Fit to Procreate. Oh, I like that so much. It's her Instagram. So she does. She helps uh, women understand what they need to do before, during pregnancy. Oh, man, I'd and love to talk to her. And she's across, you know, she has experience with CrossFit and strength uh, training for women. So um, there's a resource. Yeah. So. I'd, I'd love that. And well, so, like, one, ask more questions. Yeah. Figure out the why and the source and then the original source of information. Definitely. How valid and, or how old or dated is it? Um. And then, like, you know, for example, they tell pregnant women not to go upside down. Well, why? And they said because you might fall. And you can't uh, – most women don't have that midline stability to keep their back from arching and having a little bit of issues. But the baby's rolling around into the last few weeks of pregnancy. Yeah. So it's not – baby going upside down is the issue. It's falling um, is an issue and midline stability. But if you're capable of keeping midline stability 
and holding yourself up, then you can still go upside down. So it's just asking questions and why and finding out what their reasoning is. Um, and, and that's the biggest thing that I encourage women is to press more information from their doctor. Mm. Um, that's really great advice. And then, like, you know, we were talking about the potential of cesarean because I'm a tiny human. He's not a – he's a giant human. There's, like, there's some logistic issues. And um, they were like, well, if we – you know, we're not – we're going to do everything we can to not have a cesarean unless it's an emergency issue. And he was like, what do you classify as an emergency? Give us the lowest standard. And it was just, like, awesome. What they have as an emergency may not be what we consider an emergency or the standard industry emergency. So – it was, it was just nice to ask specific questions and then continue to ask once they've answered it to get a thorough, yeah. consistent answer. Um, and then people were like, oh, my God, Christmas, you're working out during your pregnancy. I did take it easy my first trimester because I was so devast- – like, I was so crazy paranoid about um, a miscarriage um, because of the intensity level and just, like, your body's going through trauma – uh, like a, a wild thing. But now, you know, like as I got closer to the second trimester, I was able to up the intensity level, but I never redlined. Um, and there was one time I was like, oh man, I'm kind of dizzy. But my body was like, shut it down, Christmas. Um, but for now until, you know, the birth, I'm training for labor. Like yeah. I need to be able to keep my core midline. I need to be able to, and, and I'm doing it smart. You know, you don't overdo anything, but that's the same thing with anything else that we do in life. So, now it's it's labor training. Yeah. What's up? I'm going <laughs> to push, push, pop. <laughs> and you, you taught me something new at lunch. So oh, I, yeah. Yeah. I I heard that it's not, uh, it may not be good to cut the umbilical cord right after birth, but I didn't know any of the details of that. Yeah. What's so the deal with that? Ben and I have been exploring how do we want to have this birth. And we have the idea, we, we know that like you can have your idea, plan A, right. and then you have reality that might happen plan b and we might even have a contingency plan right so we're, we're trying to be really open to it and in that idea we're educating ourselves on all the possible ways of birth and you know what's the processes for each you know like cesarean um breach all these things so we you know with the umbilical cord they're so they're they're harvesting um uh i said it at lunch the umbilical cord now, not harvesting, but they're banking blood now. Yeah. Right. And it's doing, you know, they're using this blood for a lot of regenerative things and just really, really great things because it's like such potent blood. It's the good stuff. It's the right? good stuff. Yeah. So what's stem happen- cells and yeah, stem yeah. cells. Um, I mean, just really, really incredible things. So if you're thinking about like that's what it is in the umbilical cord, and then you just yak it off, you're you're really like losing that. So what we've researched is that. When the baby's born, if you allow, because it pulsates, it's almost like a heart. It is the placenta connection from the placenta to the baby. Um, so it is the heart uh, cord. So as it's after the baby's born, to have the best connection, you, you hold it right away before it's all messed up, which we talked about yep, letting it. Don't don't wash it off. Right. Like let the baby be in its stuff yeah. and just put the baby on the mother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and they have like it, it just it no creates soap. so much. Yeah better connection for multitude of reasons uh, and levels. And you'll see the cord pulsating. It's pumping all of that extra blood into the baby, <sighs> preventing jaundice, preventing um, early sickness. I mean, there's so many. There's a list, and I, I guarantee you Ben would be able to rattle it off verbatim. Um, I'm not that. I, it just doesn't stick. Um, and, and, then, and then after about an hour – after all the blood has gone into the baby as it should, then they'll cut the cord. Um, but what they're doing now is they're cutting the cord immediately, washing the baby off, banking this blood for for a multitude of reasons, mostly financial. Um, Vampires, mostly. Yeah, yeah. So and then then it's very expensive to store the blood, and it's not nearly as impacting uh, later on in life. So you're finding that these babies that are allowed to to stay connected. Um, for longer are much healthier yeah and 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 just generally just way healthier are you gonna eat the placenta i don't know do you know what i'm talking about i've heard of this but i have not researched yet so i mean i'm willing i'll try it yeah um (laughs) (coughs) i mean you could cook it up and eat it or um i I thought people have made it into pills they do so they'll like they'll like cut it and put it in pills and put it in the freezer and take those later uh, does that um alter the structure of the I've heard it's still good that way, and it's it can uh, reduce postpartum depression. Yeah, 
which is huge. So that's that's a thing. It's it's growing. Yeah. And it's scary because, you know, I haven't researched too much, but I know, I mean, like they're, I think it's like one in four. I mean, it's it's a good it's amount. It's a lot. It's a lot of women that are dealing with postpartum depression. And, you know, like I've, I've had a joyous pregnancy. Like I am over the moon, but I've had dark days. I ha- I mean, I've had, I've entertained thoughts um, in, in the way, like becoming negatively obsessed with something. And I haven't done that since I was in high school. Mm. You know, and I'm like, who is this? This is somebody that I would not even tolerate. Right. And, um, you know, the hormones, as wonderful as they make you feel, they can also make you feel real bad. Uh, so, and it's, the hormones don't go away right after you have the baby. Like, it stays and it, it continues and it takes a long time. You know, pregnancy, having a baby is about a two-year process um, from beginning to, like, normal normality again. Two years? About two years. You know, nine months for the baby ah. and then another, uh, you know, nine to ten months to kind of get the hormones balanced out and you're okay. And then you got a couple months of, like, getting well, I know to people have had normal. back-to-back children for years. and Wow, yeah. they just never get to baseline. No, they're skipping wow. baseline altogether. Yeah, isn't wow. that wild? That's wild. Um, so postpartum depression, you know, th- you have this being, and they've actually considered the first three months of a, a newborn, you know, as the fourth trimester, uh, because it's just it eats, it sleeps, shits. That's it. Yeah, and, I mean, and you're still you're breastfeeding, and I mean, you're doing that probably. But it's not awake yet. You know, it, oh. they have this. They call it the awakening. Where like after three to four months, it'll be like, and it's just behavior is different. Oh. So I've never. I, mean, I, I had little brothers and sisters, <laughs> but I was like ten. Yeah. I wasn't paying attention. I was playing baseball. The uh, yeah. And all right, now I'm looking. So now you're like. Is now this... I'm getting excited. Oh man. <laughs> Shit. So you have this like. What are you doing, Christmas? You're, um. You're gonna, I'm gonna go make a baby after this. I think you should. I don't know. We'll you know see. so much about it. <laughs> AJ's in the background laughing. Listen, <laughs> me and Ashley will rub bellies. <laughs> <laughs> that that is a thing. The uh, not, not well not well maybe it's rubbing baby bellies. Besties. Thing, but but like anytime when like people in a group of friends start getting pregnant, like you should get pregnant. I'm like, just because you're pregnant doesn't mean I need to be getting pregnant. Jeez. It really is. It's nice to share the chaos with somebody. But there, but there is <laughs> the, the conversations do come up. Or you know, I have friends like. You gonna get pregnant when I get pregnant? Or like, who's leading the way? I'm like, I'm like, we should not be having this conversation. But uh, you know what? I I am finally at a point in my life where I'm okay with that. I like that so much. Isn't it? And I I didn't think I was gonna get to where I couldn't imagine it. And now I'm like, you know what? Having kids sounds exciting. It's so magical. It's unreal. And this is just the beginning. Like I I'm officially into my second trimester as of this week, and I I just can't I can't wait to have the bump. Um, and you know, I just, I can't wait to experience all of it. And I just think about like when we went to our second, um, sonogram, uh, me and Ben are watching it and then it comes up and the baby just starts flipping around and it was like Circus Olay in there and it was less than two inches and it's on this big screen and we're like, man, that, mo-, and the, <laughs> the tech was like, you have a very active child. Very. No, <laughs> fuck. Like, <laughs> of course, we're gonna have like well, the you're most gonna crazy have an baby ever. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely gonna have an athlete. Yeah, I'm yeah, in in a, in a very strong personality. Dope. <laughs> so, um, yeah, postpartum depression is serious, and and I I encourage women to recruit recruit assistance. So I have a I have a doula. We kind of mentioned this earlier, which is um, not a midwife, but a, a person that will is like basically like my lean on. You know, I can talk about my feelings. I can ask questions on my body and like get an answer in real time, like right then within 12 hours. Um, she she gives me massages and does energy work with me. We talk about what's going on with my body, what's going on with my my heart and like my emotions. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it's just nice because they they are with you the entire time. Through the pregnancy, they're in the room, or through the, um, the delivery, they're in the room, and then they're with you on on average six weeks after the pregnancy because that's when postpartum depression sets in the most. Yeah, um, and it's it's a very you know very crazy time. So women are tough, man, so tough. I'm, I'm the older I get, the more I'm I believe that I'm just here <laughs> for the women, like as a man. It's like. Like, I thought I was the show. No. 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 
y'all are the show. You, you got to take a couple steps back. Yeah. Like, <laughs> y'all create everything. Everything comes from women. <laughs> like, without y'all, we would have nothing. Well, um, we need some help. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, what else are you excited about in 2018? Uh. I mean that's number one, but well, I well obviously. <laughs> I mean I, it's hard. It's hard to like anything else is going to be kind of like a, eh. I know. Um, so I'm launching Can Christmas Habit Nutrition, and it's it's been a work. It's been a dream um, for the last five years since I you know I started my um, nutrition seminars and then the book and then I was like I want to do an online version of yep. this and. We had kind of talked about this a couple of years ago, and I'd been... I tried to help you. And yeah, I it's failed. okay. No, no. Um, you know, it just... It, things it, it things happen when they're supposed it was, to happen. It was a pivot. You know, yeah. it needed... It, I needed to go a different way. You needed to go a different way, and that's the way it should have been. Yep. And uh, I've been working on this program for over a year now. I, I've literally invested my... Uh, my sa- All of my savings, you know? And like, this is this is the biggest thing that I have done professionally and I've done some cool stuff. Yep. And um, we're within a couple of days from launching. Right now, we're just really fine combing all the details and doing it again and, and again. And I know that's not going to be launched perfect, but I want it to be launched as polished as possible and um, to have minimal issues. But it's the way that it works is that if you sign up and you're like, Christmas, I want to, I need to some nutrition coaching, my job is to work myself out of a job. And you get a weekly lesson plan, and you have one challenge to implement during that week. You get a grade. So if you're like, Christmas, I have, um, I don't have a very healthy lifestyle, but I can give you 60% effort. I'm like, okay, cool. What's your goal? And they're like, I want to lose 20 pounds in two months. I'm like, well, with 60% effort, it's going to take you three months. Right. So, you know, so we can reverse engineer it. So realistic week, expectations. Realistic. I love it. And yeah. it changes. So every week. Um, you may start getting success and get motivated all of a sudden to be 80%. Well, it's it's education. So we want to empower people to know what they're doing and why they're doing mm. it. And so once you if you start off at 60%, but in two or three weeks, you're like, okay, I'm getting the hang of this. And just naturally, you're going to be better and consistent. Then it's going to pop up to 65 or 70%. And yep. then it's that goal will be pushed back closer to what you wanted. Yeah. Um, so it, it actually is a it's a living, moving um, understanding of where you are. So every two weeks we recalculate your macros. So and it, it gives you a, a daily allotment including fiber and water intake. Um, and what happens is you you log your food. I can make special meals for myself because I eat the same breakfast every day or some variation of it. I have a coffee, so I need to record that. Um, but if you don't have one recorded, what you can do is take a picture of your meal and all the items get listed immediately and you can plus, and then you adjust the serving size, which we teach you to how, how to do that by your hand. Um, and it's, it's that simple. Like my grandma can use it. I love it. technology. It's so smart. And what it does is the more you use the, the food snap, the food scan is, it's like face recognition. The more it will understand how you eat. And Some AI shit. Yeah, it's so smart. Like I, I'm like, eh, how did this happen? Um, it's incredible. That's cool. So you have, we have a coach for you, but the coach is not adjusting your macros. Like that is done automatically, so it reduces human error and human opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, over the course of you know what, what depending on what program you have, we're gonna start challenging you more and more to implement this lifestyle so you're making the right decisions for yourself and then you get put on the independent program which you have access to all of the archives the lesson plans the videos the tips the q a's and you just get to use the program consistently afterwards um it's beautiful it's it, it it blows my mind so what's awesome is that you know um if you're like hey like i said accuracy and consistency um somebody that we we teach people expectations we're like hey look 100 percent is not going to happen even though everybody wants it 100 percent is not going to happen high athletes that are training for a specific program and regimen that are on and dialed in are about 90 percent like that's what i would be with um training up to cutting weight for weightlifting um you know people that are really health conscious 
Okay. It's fine. People that are really health conscious and like work out and are able to implement nutrition into their everyday life as a big part of their um of their core values will be about 80%. 70% is a good place for the average person to be. And uh, 60% is like somebody that's like, man, I don't know what to do, but I'm going to try, but I'm going to fail a lot. And that's okay because you keep trying. And so it gives them a perspective of like 60% is not failing. This is not high school. 60% is okay. We can make improvements, but you're still doing the program. That's cool. Yeah. I like that a lot. So we want to empower people by not just getting obsessed with the numbers. Yeah, I think it'll get a lot more success that way. I hope so. Yeah. I want people to, to just know how to eat well. And then when they see these other diets or these fads or trends, they can make educated decisions on whether or not it's actually good for them. Inquire about the the authentic or the the um, validity of it, and then also like implement it when it where they need it, not just because they should or you they know, think they should, and it's not sustainable. I like to do things that are just shiny yeah, and fun looking. It's like, I can get results next week. Mm-hmm. Let's do that. But they won't <laughs> stay. No. And, and you know, it teaches you how to train your metabolism, which people don't know how to do. Yeah. And they're like, what? No, my metabolism is slow. I'm like, because you don't eat breakfast until, you don't eat anything until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. You're you're essentially in starvation mood all fucking day. Yeah. Lots of things. Cigarettes and things. coffee. That's yeah. the way to go. Sounds great. That was my old <laughs> diet. Um, but it's super fundamental. It's not heady. Like it's yeah. it's super basic, no measuring for you. It'll tell you what you're missing, and you don't have to hit all the numbers. Awesome. Know? Yeah. Sounds cool. Thanks. It's awesome. Yeah. What? Uh, anything else you want to mention before we roll? Um. I'm getting hungry. I know, man. Is it dinner time? <laughs> Speaking of macros, let me go get some food because I'm hungry. And we got some ancient oh building man. shit over here on that the right. That is so cool. I want to go stand in those. Yep. Um, other thing I guess is just, man, I, I launched Born. Born Relentless is my supplement company. Okay. And, uh, you know, I just got tired of having to examine every supplement that I, I use myself. And so I made really top quality stuff. And um, I love it. Um, the Firefly is amazing. It's the nighttime recovery. And um, so my gym is CrossFit Invoke, and I have the pre-workout is Invoke. Oh, <laughs> I like that a lot. And we launched the the protein next week. Nice. And it's delicious. Nice. It's grass-fed, free-range, um, whey protein from New Zealand. Dope. It's so good. What what's uh what's the Firefly? That's that's the nighttime. Uh yeah, so it's a combination um of a little bit of melatonin, just you know, because we release that that melatonin, but it's also, it has valerian root. Mm-hmm. Um, and, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting right now. My bigger brain's setting in. But it, what, it, what it does is it actually calms your brain. Yeah. So it, it you actually can, when you do get to sleep, which the melatonin puts you to sleep, but it doesn't keep you asleep, right? right? The valerian root will calm your brain so you can actually stay asleep and have a peaceful rest. So you actually get into that realm um, sleep a little bit faster and easier. I have a good, easy time going to sleep. Not always staying asleep when I'm on the road, so I might need to add Valerian root in. Awesome. And I just get some Firefly. Maybe. Take care of that shit. I might know somebody. Next time I fly to Europe, I'm taking some Firefly <laughs> with me. Awesome. All right. Where can people find you? Uh, More of you. Man, ChristmasAbbott.com. If you sign up for my newsletter, then you always get in the know before everybody else, and you always get the sweetest discounts. Like, everybody is doing... Um, everybody that's on the newsletter gets to start can way before everybody else and they get a little discount with that. So yeah, do that. Yeah. And you know, the, it's just, it's the, the VIP experience of whatever I'm doing. You get the, the first peak. There you go. Yeah. So christmasabbat.com sign up for the newsletter. Bada, badass body cruise. Badass body cruise. Yeah. Yeah. Come cruise at Christmas. Shit. I might come. We're, we'll I don't know see. when this is going to air, but they're still doing. We're still doing a two hundred dollar discount, um, if you pre-register right now until next uh, Thursday, I think. Yeah, this won't air by then. Okay, you missed it, folks. You got to be sorry. You got to be on the newsletter. Bye. You got to be on Instagram. <laughs> you got to be doing that shit. All right, thanks for joining me today. Thanks, Enjoyed Mike. It. It's so good to see you. Good again. to see you. Bye. All right, folks, I know you love the show, so go over to iTunes, give us a five-star review, 
positive comment. Support our sponsors. Go over to onit.com slash Bledsoe. Check out a free bottle of Alpha Brain. Good stuff there. And last but not least, go over to thebloodsoeshow.com. Click on the events page and see what seminars I'm putting together. Putting some shit together for uh, the East Coast. So I don't make it out very often. People have been asking. Now we're doing it. So uh, looking forward to hanging out. See you there.